Hey, good morning, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. This is for Saturday, September 26th. So it is the weekend. Happy Saturday, uh, happy Saturday <laughs> to all of you. Uh, we actually have some new news and some big news. Uh, the, the hurricane is back. It is showing it again. Like I said, it does show it every few days until it gets closer. Then it'll be every day. But there's new and different uh, information today. But before I get to this, let me show you the patterns that I'm finding. Now, I'm going to show you on WSV3, I'm going to show you on Pivotal Weather, and I'm going to show you on Tropical Tidbits, because I'm showing three different outcomes. So let's go through them real quick. Now, this is your 10-meter winds. This is so you can see what power it is. And I am using GFS, because it is starting on 252. Euro only goes to 240, guys. So as soon as it gets over to Euro, I can show you what Euro is saying about this storm. But as of now, they, they still don't see that far away. Now, to 252 hours, I'm going to go every six hours, just like I always do. You'll see that it, instead of shooting north, like the model's been showing the last few times, uh, it, it is shooting across the island. Now, the main thing to, to go with this, let me bring up Wendy to show you exactly uh, what's going on with, with this area. Now, if you look over Central America, the way the winds are going, they have strong winds coming from the east, pushing west. Okay, you see that here. They have strong winds from the west pushing east, and they also have north winds that's pushing south. So that puts a spin right here. Uh, it can spin up a storm if it has uh, thunderstorms or a lot of activity. Any pressure that comes in this area will get a potential for a spin. And that's why we see the spin in our model. That's where it, that's where it helped it out and got it going. But like I said, we have something new this morning. It is showing that it's going go over the over uh, land instead of going straight into the Gulf, and it's going to go into the western side of the Gulf. And I'm going to show you everything involved. I'm going to show you the high pressures, uh, what's happening with the storm, what's pushing it. Also, is it going to get together with another low pressure and become a problem for the East Coast? I'm showing that as well. So we have a bunch of uh, things to look at today, and I really would like y'all opinion on what y'all think could happen between these three factors. Now, 276, here it is moving across and getting into our western side of our Gulf. Because if, if it turns late, this was the only chance for it getting into the Gulf and have any effect towards Texas or any of those areas. Because this time of the year, it, in October, it does curve sharply east. Usually there's a western wind pushing east very strongly. Now, on 288, and then here's 300. Matter of fact, let me show you. Here's 300 on the next one right here. It gets down to 997. At 312, it gets down to 989, and it starts doing a curve into our golf. It starts getting uh, a little bit more intensity, as you can see. And then it starts doing its turn. It looks like it's so far, it's not going to do anything towards Texas. Like I said, it's a very sharp turn that's expected out of these storms this time of the season. Now here it is on 336, headed towards Louisiana. And here it is. Let me back. I backed it up a little bit. 324, so you can see where it's going to go. Now here's 324. A little bit better look. 336, going towards Louisiana, and you can see how big the wind field is from this storm. At 348, it shows it going past Louisiana. You can see the strong winds. I mean, if you want to count the wind barbs. The half a barb is five knots, the long barb is 10 knots, and the transfer knots to winds is divided by six, and that add that number to your knots. Now here it is down here on 348, so you can get a little bit better look of what's going on with the other high pressures involved. Because we do have a high pressure up here that shows that it's going to be moving across, and it actually is going to block it from leaving the East Coast. And another model shows that it will actually get together with this low pressure Okay, it shows that this will be more of a southern low pressure, and they're going to form together and go up towards New York. But, but let me go on and show you what we have real quick. Now at 360, you see it moved on land, and then here's the high pressure moving across. And then when we look at 372, the high pressure moved across first, which blocks it with this ridge, so it can't go easterly, and it actually goes a western push. Let me go back and forth so you can see. It actually goes a western push. 
because of that high pressure. All right. Now let me bring up something else. I'm going to bring up the precipitation of this. That way you can see exactly how much rain could be with this and which side is it loaded. It looks like it is north and northeast like every other typical storm is where it's supposed to be on the eastern. Now here it is on 312 moving closer on um, precipitation to Texas. And then when it gets towards Texas, it gets this sharp turn. And then here's 336 when it's affecting Louisiana. And you can see it good right here on this shot. And it looks like a lot of heavy rainfall headed for eastern Louisiana as well, if this model holds true. But like I said, there's, there's a, a few different aspects that we need to keep in mind. Now at 348, it shows it affecting Alabama, uh, Florida, you can get a better shot right here. And when it comes in, you can see it expand all the way out, getting pulled out across the East Coast. And then on 360, this is where it, it, it butts up with the high pressure up here, and this is where it's going to take the Western push. You see that? And there's a system moving across here to, to the East that it gets together with. It all depends which model we go with. Now here on Tropical Tidbits, here's your system here. It is showing it way stronger, showing it down to 955. And as you go forward, you'll see that it goes all the way down to 951. All right, 951. And then this, this system that's on the East Coast that's pushing out, it shows on Tropical Tidbits that they actually get together, form up right there over uh, South Carolina and go right up the East Coast, over New York, and everywhere else up in that area. And it goes right over land the whole time. And that, that's, that's according to Tropical Tidbits. I mean, they have other uh, storms, tropical cyclones in the, in the Pacific that's going out towards the ocean. It actually, it does hit land right there a little bit. But if you watch it, you can see what I'm talking about. Now, I'm going to let it play on Tropical Tidbits so you can see. Get a little bit up. And then here it is right here. Moving up through the Gulf. Going across land and staying on land, according to Tropical Tidbits. Now, if we go to Wendy, I'm sorry, not Wendy, WSV3, you'll see that actually on the 5th, the storm does become a tropical storm, according to WSV3. And I slowed it down a little bit so we can watch all the formation of it. Now, it's still showing the same information here that it is not going to go uh, across land into the, the western gulf. That it shows it still does a sharp turn to the north and goes straight into our gulf like before. That's why I wanted to show you the different aspects. On uh, pivotal weather, it shows that it goes across land into the western gulf and curbs very sharply. On tropical tidbits, it shows the same thing here that it just does a northern turn and it don't go across land, but it shows that it meets up with another system and goes across the east coast. And on WSV3, it shows that it just stays on the east coast edge and just stays a, 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 a strong tropical storm in the 50s. Now, just so you know, that, that green uh, right there was one of the peak intensities uh, of the storm. And that, that right there alone is 99 miles an hour. So that right there alone is a Cat 2 hurricane. Now, as it gets closer, it still makes the, the push towards Florida, towards Tampa. And once again, the, the strength of it as it gets in, it shows that it gets more intensity. It's up to 100 now. And probably I can probably find a little higher uh, if I check a little more into it. Let's, we won't have deafness until it gets closer. And right before landfall, before it comes on the land, you see it has another intensity. And it looked like it was even stronger than what I'm showing here. But still, 98, 100, I mean, it's two miles an hour. No matter what, it's still terrible, terrible. It's 98, it's in the 90s, that's terrible, man. 80s is terrible, 70s is terrible. But it's showing somewhere around Tallahassee uh, for where it's going to go in. And, and let me see if I can back it up and get that one spot of intensity. I'll try one more time. If not, it, it don't matter. We got to wait for it to get closer anyway to get a more accurate 
uh, read on this. Yeah, 90, 98, 99. I'm still showing it still has great strength with this storm. It is uh, looks like it's 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 east side, east to southeast uh, loaded instead of north. Now the precipitation is going to be on the north, but the, this the wind field is what this is. This is looking at the wind field. Then on here it shows that it goes through Florida, it goes through Georgia, and then it goes towards the east coast out here and becomes a tropical storm. That's what this is, 39. And as you watch it, you'll see that it actually gets some red into it, which is the 50s. Now, we won't see exactly every little impact right here because it's so far away. But you see right there in the red, that's S 50s right there. All right. That's on, that's on the east coast uh, so far. Now, that's just what WSV3 is showing. Now, the other models are showing that it stays on land and moves on up. And here it is again on the 10th, showing peak intensity of the 50s again in the northeast. So as far as which model uh, would be correct, you know how this goes. Your, your guess is as good as everybody else's because it's so far away. We actually have to wait for it uh, to get closer. You know, bad to say, but we have to wait for it to get closer before we can get the peak intensity out of it and we can see exactly what's going on. I'm going to put this on fast. So you can watch the track and what's going on with the track uh, from the get-go. Back up a little more. There you go. But once again, we, we, we don't know. I want, I want to uh, make this very clear. that we, we don't know exactly the track of this storm yet. We don't know if it's going to go in the Gulf. We don't know if it's going to go in the western Gulf towards Texas. We don't know if it's going to be like tropical tidbits and stay on land and affect, affect the uh, inland states and go towards the northeast. So we still have to wait for that to see. Now yesterday, we did Genesis 15. Today is Genesis 16. i also like to mention the Old Testament, the book of Moses. Uh, what I want to do is I want to read everything as it was intended by our Lord God for everybody to know what's going on. So after, before the New Testament, and after I read the Old Testament of the book of Moses and all, all his chapters, uh, I'm going to go ahead and order, uh, I believe it was Ezra, the second the second book of Moses. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to order that one. So after we finish the first book of Moses, I was thinking about going straight into the second book of Moses, Ezra, before we go to the New Testament. That way it's in order according to the way it should have been. First book of Moses, second book of Moses in the New Testament with Jesus and the prophets. So tell me what you think in the comments. I think that would be a good idea to, to hear what's going on with that. It would definitely be a first-time read for me. Uh, I was uh, Catholic when I was younger, so I was raised Catholic, so I'd never even read Ezra. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, available. Okay, Genesis 16. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, bare him no children, and she had an handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. Hagar, probably. Sorry. And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing, I pray thee. Go in unto my maid, it may be that I may, uh, may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of, of Canaan, and gave her to her husband Abram to, to be his wife. And he went in, in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarai said unto Abraham, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid unto thy bosom. And when she saw, when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. And the Lord judged between me and thee. But Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand, do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, whence camest thou, and whither, and whither wilt thou go? 
And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress and submit thyself under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and shalt call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. And he will be a wild man. His hand will be, will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her, Thou God seest me? For she said, Have I also here looked after him that seeth me? Wherefore the, the well was called Bilahiroi. Behold, it is between Kadesh and Bered. And Hagar bare Abram a son. And Abram called his son's name, which Hagar bare Ishmael. And Abram was fourscore and six years old when Hagar bare Ishmael to Abram. Amen. God bless you all today. I hope you all have a great Saturday today. It is nice for the most part across the whole country. Uh, we do have this thing to look forward to. So if, if you have any opinions to what you think the possibility of this track could go, I mean, you see the high pressure pushing it and blocking it on some of these, these uh, maps, some of these models. And then it goes a little westerly after that. And then some models show that it gets together and goes up the east coast. Most of them show it does go up the east coast. But but uh, tropical tidbits show they got together with another storm. So we'll see exactly what's going to happen to this as it gets closer. So I pray that everybody be safe from this. I pray whatever it does, it does it quickly and leaves. And it don't just stay and just affect a whole bunch of people. So God bless you. Hope you all have a great day. Let me know in the comments what you think about reading Ezra after the first book of Moses. All glory does go to God. Amen.